Hey, I'm Thomas, and this is an update about the new functions that are coming up in the next firmware and some hardware stuff. Basically, uh, things that I showed people at the super booth. So, if you haven't been there, here's your update. I will tell something about the new firmware features like the mapping and scaling and uh, some additional stuff. Also, about the new MIDI interface or the multi IO. MIDI, USB, I2C and knob interface. So let's start with the mapping screen. So we go to the project and then we have a mapping setup. There we have uh, basically on the left side there's the source and on the right side there's the destination. So what it is, you can route any source to any destination and, and any means every parameter inside and outside the sequencer can be a source and every parameter inside and outside the sequencer can be a destination. For example, we have, we can choose like a, a CV output of, or an input, let's say the CV input one, we choose as a source and a destination could be, let's say, the node of uh, CV output five or the destination can be the LFO speed for the first automator, this one. Um, if we go on, we can have like a lot of uh, sources. Now, the CV inputs, the CV outputs can be also a source for something. Then uh, we have the triggers can be a source, so you can use a trigger to trigger something else. Uh, and do calculations with it, but that will be uh, the next step. So the tracks, we choose a track and we can say like, oh, the probability should be a source or the pattern row should be a source for something. Uh, let's go to the automators and of course every uh, parameter of the automators can be a source. The envelopes, every parameter of the envelopes can be a source. Uh, then MIDI CC. MIDI channel and then the CC number can be a source. Uh, I2C, I will come to back to that later, but every I2C parameter can be a source. And what I have here, for example, we have the 16N uh, 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 fader thing from of project, can be also any other fader uh, 16N uh, uh, one. And I have this connected now through I2C. And I can have every fader can be now a source for any function again. Uh, and then we have variables. So you can set variables and you can calculate with all these values. So you have functions like add, subtract. So you could say like, oh yeah, I want to have the CV input uh, 2 and add it to uh, uh, the current attack uh, uh, setting of the envelope. Uh, the calculations add sub more like the standard stuff, uh, divide and then add with uh, uh, overflow, bitwise and, bitwise or, left shift, right shift, left and, uh, uh, logic and, logic or, logic XOR. Uh, we have the if commands, so if first parameter is smaller than the second parameter, then the, the result should be uh, true or false and with that you can feed any other thing again. So let's say we have the, the if parameter if, if the first value is smaller than the second value. So the first digit, these are variables and now we have a line. So we go to C, we see on the left side we see the 0C and that means the line 0C. So that means if the that means if the CV value of mod 2 is smaller than variable R, then the output should be high. It's not the case right now. You can always see on the top uh, uh, the result of it because it's just running all the time. Um, and you can go on like this, if smaller than, and uh, uh, flip-flop, uh, 
uh, then uh, Raising Edge will uh, toggle the output and uh, sample and hold and the counter and uh, digital invert and a uh, regular invert. So low is going high and high going low. Then we have global uh, sources like uh, sequencer row. If the sequence is running, so if the sequence is running, then it's high, and if it's uh, stopping, it's low. You can have the clock input, is, uh, you can route it to everything. The clock output can be routed to everything, so you could use this with the calculations to do a clock divider and stuff. Um, and this now everything is live routed to the, uh, to the automator speed. So uh, destinations can be uh, CV, pitch, CV, note, and then which one you choose. Uh, the trigger outputs can be used if you do a clock divider, use the trigger outputs as a destination. Uh, then track, and you can uh, set the mute, solo, pattern order, uh, transpose, and then and, and probabilities, and some Euclidean stuff, and nodes, and 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 and. Um, automators can be destination, envelopes can be destination, and then MIDI CC can be destination, so you could use one MIDI CC and send it out directly to another MIDI CC. Uh, I2C can be destination. Uh, all the audio stuff can be destination, so you can completely control the FM synth uh, by uh, uh, with any source, write into a variable again, use it again for the calculations, and some global stuff, transpose, global swing, you can change all the stuff. Um, so I Okay, so I set up some basic things for now, so you can see how how it how it works. So in this case, I have the fader box, which is uh, connected to port zero, port one, two, three, four, and this these are the faders one, two, three, four. Uh, these are the faders here connected, and they are routed to uh, track six and Euclidean uh, column one of the drum matrix. Uh, and I have this uh, five times. If I go now to track six, and let's go in there, we see the drum matrix, and we start it, and now I can use the fader to change the Euclidean values. Like this, the bass drum, and get the hi-hat. Snare drum. That's uh, uh, like uh, one of the of the mapping. So source destination I to C, but doesn't have to be I to C. Can be MIDI CC, can be CV input, or can be any parameter again. So you can really combine stuff and uh, get really crazy results. Um, so another thing, I have uh, three more faders uh, 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 as a source and routed them to attack. Uh, sustain release of envelope one of the internal one. So let's uh, play something from it. You see the envelope, and I change the fader. Let's get some drums with it. Again, the source can be anything. And, uh, and with this, it's also possible to do generative stuff or uh, let something count up and uh, get to zero again and uh, really manipulate modulations with modulations. Okay, so another thing is I added a new scaling screen and there you can set up 
scales, global scales or track scales and which affect the notes uh, that are sent out and there are many of them so well, going back chromatic again you can create also your own scaling and change the pitch of every note so uh, really for the fine stuff um, okay here I have another mapping situation and there's now again the eight faders of the I2C input uh, again can be MIDI can be CV in or anything else and those are rooted to track one and the steps that means that the fader uh, defines the note of the step okay let's uh, start the sequence and there's only one fader now on and you see I can change the notes and adding another one let's add some drums the fader is uh, completely down then uh, meets a note off and I have some glide on Let's uh, add some uh, scaling and let's go for the pentatonic one. Then it sounds always good. So there was another example of, of the mapping and so and you saw the scaling and so what you heard were just drums uh, produced by the I2C uh, output. So I have the ER301 here connected via I2C and uh, for that we have I2C screen and there we have uh, six columns for notes and pitches a bit uh, you know this may be from the CV16 expander um, then we have three FX columns and you can see here the the, the drum matrix uh, uh, for the I2C uh, screens and if I play them it just sends w through virtual patch cables to the ER301 play all together change the beat Each track can have its own setting and if we go to the setting just uh, basically we can choose which destination should be which address and which port and the same for the matrix the drum matrix uh, it sends a trigger out here but it can be the uh, other commands there are also custom commands so you can create your own bytes and you can just fire them uh, where you want to there are two I2C ports on the multi IO expander and uh, both can be either leader or follower and 
you could connect uh, uh, multiple uh, followers and uh, one leader. So leader could be like the fader box, a tiller type or this kind of stuff. And the follower could be the ear 301 uh, just friends or other devices that support I2C. So another thing you probably didn't see yet is uh, like uh, the launchpad connection and I don't go into the details of all the launchpad functions but just one basic thing uh, which incorporates the new knob and uh, the multi IO expander. So the launchpad mini is connected via USB to the USB port on the multi IO expander. I make a new sequence and it's 16 steps long. I add some uh, phone the floor beat and I go into the sequence and play it. And you see the launch pad running with the 16, 16 steps. So I can go now into a step. I just go to the edit mode. I go uh, to the step, press a button and turn around the knob. So another step. Some more steps. Another mode would be the trigger input, so I can change the Euclidean uh, uh, beats uh, with the knob. So. Shift these if I hold the button, then I can shift. And basic inserting of functions. The multi IO expander got one USB host port, connect the launch pad, connect uh, uh, any other MIDI glass compliant keyboard, uh, MIDI device port, plug it into your computer, it will pop up as a XOR MIDI device, then two TRSA MIDI ports in and out, then it has uh, two I2C square i ports on the back side, but one is also routed to the front, so you can also uh, connect your external uh, I2C capable gear. And the knob, dial-in values, dial-in notes and stuff, and the three buttons, which can be used for easy and fast access of different functions. Okay, so that for a little update, not too much into detail and there's a lot more to tell, but uh, stay tuned, it will be ready within the next weeks.